everyone, I'm Whitney and welcome back to another episode of The Cinch. Today we're talking about GMOs. I'm like really afraid of GMOs and UFOs. Although there's a lot of hype around the subject of GMOs, not everyone really understands what they are or their potential harms and benefits to our health and the environment. So today we're going to cut through the fear mongering and get straight to the actual research on this confusing topic. GMO stands for genetically modified organism, and it refers to plants and animals created using biotechnology that inserts the genes from one species into the DNA of another species. It's different from simply manipulating traits of plants through crossbreeding, which humans have been doing for thousands of years. The first GMO product, the Flavor Saver Tomato, hit shelves in 1994, and the amount of GMO products in our food supply has been steadily increasing ever since. The most common GMO crops are corn, soy, cotton, and rapeseed, which is what canola oil is made from. Over 90% of these crops produced in the U.S. are genetically modified. Now before we get into the potential harms of GMOs, let's talk about the positives. Scientists created these organisms in order to achieve specific desired properties. For example, they created apples that don't brown when exposed to air, salmon that grows faster, and rice that contains beta carotene to combat deficiencies in vitamin A in poor countries where rice is a staple in the diet. Many people believe GMOs are beneficial and help fight global hunger by making it quicker and more profitable to produce food. Some studies have shown that overall, genetically modified crops reduce pesticide use. This is because some GMO crops are engineered to resist insects and therefore, farmers don't have to use insecticides on them. However, in some cases, pesticide use has actually increased. For example, Roundup Ready crops were created to be resistant to the herbicide Roundup. This means that farmers can actually use more of this pesticide to kill weeds without killing the crop. GMOs have also been beneficial in helping fight diseases that commonly affect certain crops. For example, papaya is a major cash crop in Hawaii. In 1992, a virus threatened to wipe out Hawaii's entire production of papaya. However, thanks to the creation of ring spot resistant papayas, farmers were able to save this important crop and Hawaii continues to be the main U.S. producer of it today. Another benefit of GMOs is the potential to create new pharmaceuticals using biologically active compounds created by these crops that could help fight disease. Although, the science just isn't there yet. The National Academies of Science, Engineering, and Medicine released an extensive report in 2016 stating that they found no substantiated evidence of a difference in risks to human health between GMOs and conventionally bred crops nor did it find conclusive cause and effect evidence of environmental problems from GE crops. So what's so bad about GMOs? Well, some studies show that the creation of genetically modified insect and weed resistant crops has increased the population of other pests and created insects and weeds that are also resistant to insecticides and herbicides. When it comes to health, despite the fact that the NAS declares GMOs safe, there have actually been no clinical trials on their effects on human health. The safety data we do have is derived from observational and animal studies, which don't hold the same weight as a clinical trial. While these studies show that the nutrient content of GMOs is similar to conventionally raised crops, there have been some small studies that have suggested otherwise. One study found that the phytoestrogen content of GMO soybeans was 12 to 14% lower than conventionally grown soybeans. Concerns also exist surrounding the creation of allergenic proteins by these new crops. Finally, some have speculated that genetic manipulation could lead to what's known as superbugs, bacteria and viruses that are resistant to drugs. While many of these arguments are simply hypotheses at this time, the National Academy of Sciences also stated in their report that it's difficult to reach definitive conclusions about the long-term effects of GMOs. That makes sense. As I mentioned before, GM crops have only been on the market since 1994. That's less than 30 years. Nowhere near enough time to assess the long-term effects on a human life or our ecosystem. So what's a conscientious consumer to do? It's really up to you. 
The bottom line is we don't have a lot of evidence that the potential dangers of GMOs outweigh the benefits. But we don't know what new evidence will come to light in the future. And just because the GM crops that are currently on the market are considered safe, that doesn't mean that all GM products that have yet to be created will be as well. Each new genetically modified plant and animal needs to be considered on its own. Currently, genetically engineered crops do not require pre-approval from the FDA before hitting the market. There also isn't any active legislation here in the U.S. requiring companies to clearly disclose their use of GMOs in food products. However, a bill passed by the Obama administration in 2016 will require the USDA to come up with national standards for identifying these products to consumers by this July. For now, if you want to avoid GMOs, your best bet is to buy organic products which are required to be non-GMO. You can also look for the third-party verification stamp from the non-GMO project, a little butterfly with a green check mark. I hope you guys found this video informative and that I was able to demystify this controversial topic. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more evidence-based nutrition information. I'm Whitney. Thank you so much for watching.